Morning everyone, uh, I just wanted to um, take this time, this moment on a Friday, uh, on Good Friday especially, to share a, a, just a brief really introduction to <clears throat> the Easter weekend. Um, we're still going to have our Sunday service and I hope you'll be able to join us for that, but uh, what we're actually going to be, I just want to go over today, just helpfully, I think is just to understand um, this idea, the concept and the principle of Jesus today giving his life uh, for us uh, and, and mainly, more importantly, choosing to give his life for us. Uh, and it may be something that we just um, overlook, maybe not really considered this point that Jesus decided uh, and Jesus had authority to take his life and um, raise, him, raise his life again, take it up again. And for that, I'm going to look at um, John 10, 17 to 18. Uh, and it says this, says, The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. I want us to understand something really uh, crucial about these verses today. And I hope it brings some new revelation uh, just briefly, just even just in this moment, as we just do this uh, brief introduction into the, the Good Friday, uh, the, the Easter message. Um, and I hope it's something that you haven't seen before. I hope it's something that you, you haven't really un fully engaged with, actually, because I think it's it's quite nice when we have those revelations of the word and they just really just go, wow, that make us think again about the, the things we probably read many, many times. And especially uh, an event such as Easter. So today I want us to understand that right, right to the end. Not only did Jesus die with purpose, but that he would choose to die. Jesus went willingly to his death. <clears throat> and we just need to let that soak in for a minute, I think. I think we need to just let that, especially the verses where Jesus says he has authority to lay down his life. Which I think we just need to understand for a second uh, that at no point uh, was man able to rob the life of Jesus Christ. He was never able to take away Jesus' life. We were never able to. However, we were still complicit in the punishment that we put upon him through our sin. Jesus laid down his life and gave it away so that we may not be condemned. So no longer will we be condemned if we came to him and believed in him and come to a knowledge and a truth of him. But what we need to know is that whilst we as people, we pushed him, we harassed him and beat him all the way up to the cross, which we are guilty of. It was ultimately Jesus that had to choose death. And even then, whilst we're guilty of that, of what we did to Jesus in his actions to choose death, we have been released because for those that believe in him, we are no longer condemned. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he was the only being on earth that was without sin. Before Jesus' death, we were condemned to die <clears throat> by sin. Eternal death comes because of sin. For Jesus, death was not possible in the same way. Because death had no power over a sinless God. Without sin, death had no power over him. So on the cross, Jesus had to willingly hand over his life to a death that comes from sin. Not that Jesus sinned, clearly. But he had to hand over his life to a death that comes from sin. 
Jesus was given a command by his father to lay down his life. And he chose to lay down his life and obey his father. So when we look at that part of the gospel that describes the intense torture by man, not even that was the final cause of his death. Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Philippians 2 verse 8 says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The only person who could fully humble himself was Jesus. The moment you or I try to humble ourselves, the moment we think about something good we've done, Even in built into that, the moment we just reflect on it, could possibly lead us back to pride. We cannot do it perfectly as Jesus did it. Jesus, from the very beginning, always chose the path of sacrifice. Always choosing to obey his father. Luke 22 verse 42 says this, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Never at any point was man going to determine when Jesus died. Yes, man would punish Jesus intensely. That in some way represents the weight of the sin being laid on him. It was all that sin being unleashed on him by us. But Jesus could not suffer a death to sin as we can. So he had to give up his life to death, even death on a cross. Jesus even taught this same concept to his followers. And he says in, in Luke 9, 23, 24, it says, Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me will save it. The principle that if you want to save your life, that you will in fact lose it seems to go against some sort of logic. And actually, what is being proposed here is that there's a life that we live where we hang on to the material things of this world, the material world itself, that we cling on to the things that we have. And those things turn into idolatry. Those things turn into things that are keeping us here, keeping us from experiencing a life with Jesus. So that life we will lose because we die. And actually, when you explain it and when you really think about it, Actually, it makes sense. Of course, we're going to lose this life. We pass away, we move on. And the, the worrying thing about that is, is in that attitude, we have no say in that death. Because we're so bound by the world that we chase after it. And so actually what we end up doing is, is submitting, giving over that authority of death to the world. But following Jesus requires us requires that we choose to lose our lives for him. But that we choose, not the world. When we choose Jesus, we have chosen how we'd like to lose our lives. Do we want to lose our lives to sin? Or do we want to lose our lives in pursuit, in relationship with Jesus Christ, so that we will be with him in eternity, in the kingdom of heaven. And that way the world has no say. Even if you die, we die today, even if, as we die physically. There's no power in that if we are in Jesus. And this world might cause us grief and pain, but it will not take us. When Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't 
because he didn't have enough strength to live on. Because Jesus, through the most horrendous pain, commanded every part of his body to obey him in not fighting for that life, for his own fleshly life. And in doing so, he brought his body under submission to obey his father in heaven. It's interesting to note that on the cross, uh, when the guards came, the uh, other two that were hanging on the other crosses, they would normally, they did, and, uh, and they broke their shins so that actually the body would collapse on itself. With Jesus, they didn't do that. We know that the spear went through into his heart. And if, if, you, um, if you listen to some commentaries about this, um, there is a sense that he died of a broken heart. It's really interesting that actually he didn't die because of a physical issue. He didn't die because of a physical problem, because we caused that in that sense. But actually he died of his own choosing. You see, it's important to understand that right to the end, Jesus had the final say. Jesus would choose to let go. Not through weakness, but ultimately through strength. John 19 verse 30 says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus gave up his spirit. His strength in death gave us victory over sin if we believe and trust in him. Rather than being a defeat, Jesus gave himself over to death to have victory over sin forevermore. So I want us to know one thing, at least on this Good Friday, that God has authority over all things. And it may not seem like it, it may not appear like it sometimes when we look around, what especially what's happening today, it may appear that it's contrary to what is happening. But the death of Jesus seems contrary to what should have happened. Why did he have to die? For the sins of many. And that choice, that very choice to give his life for many, means today we all have a chance to have the gift of a new life in Christ Jesus. To be forgiven for all the sin that we have caused, all the sin that we have done. And just with a, a contrite and genuine heart, say, Lord, thank you for your salvation. I am yours. So when everything is said and done, when everything is finished, there's clearly just one message that comes out of an Easter message, in particular for this one. It's the guarantee that if you give your life to Jesus, then you will indeed be saving it. And I want to encourage you in that message that today you can give your life to Jesus again. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to close this message for today. Lord, we want to thank you that you are uh, all authority over all things. Uh, that, Lord, we see this crazy stuff going on in the world, but we thank you, Lord, that you are in charge. And, Lord, we don't live for the life of today, but we live for the life in eternity with you. And so, Lord, we just ask and pray for our brothers and sisters around the world that they will come to a, 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 re, a new realisation of what you've done. Um, the life you've given up. The life you chose to give up. Lord, may that message again this year come through even more so for people that are yet to know you. May they come to know you strongly. May they come to know you in a new way. That they don't have to lose their life, but they can give their life to you and have their life in eternity with you. Lord, we pray for our NHS. We pray for our, the, all the medical staff all around the world that are serving to help battle in this crisis of the coronavirus. 
And Lord, we just want to thank you that you have designated, skilled up, anointed, as it were, people with who, who are determined to want to serve and help people. And Lord, we thank you for those people. We lift them up to you today, Lord, that you will indeed uh, give them encouragement and be a source of their strength. Lord, we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. I want to thank you for being uh, with me today, just to even just watching this video. I hope you'll be watching on Sunday uh, when we have our uh, second part of this message, a fuller message uh, of um, the Easter message. Um, I look forward to that and I, I hope you can join us. Uh, have a great day. Have a good weekend and I'll see you soon.